Okay, here I am at the corner of Michigan and Trumbull. We're right across the street here. It used to be a baseball stadium. Tiger Stadium was right across the street. Tiger Stadium opened in 1912 and was known as Navin Field. In the late 30s, the stadium was renamed Briggs Stadium and the upper deck was completed to go all around the entire field. And prior to Tiger Stadium being at this location was Bennett Park, and that opened in 1896. So baseball has been played at the corner of Michigan and Trumbull for over 100 seasons. And the last game played at Tiger Stadium was in 1999. So I haven't found a whole lot marking the history of Tiger Stadium in this location. How would anybody else know there was a Major League Baseball stadium here for nearly a hundred years? Well, I did come across this plaque here that looks to be pretty weathered, uh, certainly needs a facelift. Uh, there is a new ballpark in the spot where Tiger Stadium was. Um, it's used for small colleges, high schools, uh, the Police Athletic League. So we'll go around and check that out. But I'm looking for where did Tiger Stadium go? I mean, we all know it closed in 1999. It took 10 years for it to tore down. So it's kind of sat there rotting. I want to find out where can we find bits and pieces of Tiger Stadium. So come along and let's see what we can find. Well, I found an absolute gem right here. I'm on Trumbull, just south of Michigan Avenue, and this old Tiger Stadium parking sign is still standing. I think this was a, has been around for at least 50 years, maybe more, and I hope they keep the sign or at least try to restore it. And just going down what would be the third base side of Tiger Stadium is Cochran Drive. And Mickey Cochran was a very popular Detroit catcher and manager in the 1930s and led the Tigers to two American League championships. I found this from the corner of Michigan Avenue and 14th Street. It's a picture of Sparky Anderson and Ernie Harwell. I'm guessing it dates back to the 1980s. If you get a chance to check out the corner ballpark, there's some great memorabilia inside. So there's a sign here, welcome to the former site of historic Tiger Stadium. So there is a small grandstand that got built and that's over on the third base side. There's a couple bleachers over here on the first base side. So the flagpole, from what I understand, is the only original thing remaining from Tiger Stadium. And it was always in on the playing field. And it looks like it still is today in this field. So Al Kaline played for the Tigers for many years and he played right field. And so this and his right field was known as Kaline's Corner. So it is so cool that they're honoring that right here, um, or they, they kept this um, to honor Al Kaline's legacy. Also on this new field, it looks like the bullpen is pretty much in the same spot. They used to warm up right on the side of the field here. This would have been the visitor's bullpen. But there is some memorabilia here that I want to show. Okay, this is exactly what I've been looking for, and I'm glad they have some type of history of all the baseball that has been played at this corner. So the Tigers started playing Bennett Park from 1896 to 1911. It was at this site, uh, but then uh, they built Navin Field, which turned into Tiger Stadium. And that opened in 1912. So we have some original nave and field seats here. And some of the 
gloves that were used uh, at, during certain time periods. And Briggs Stadium, Tiger Stadium, the old green seats. That's what I remember when I first came here with the green seats. Great pictures of Maven Field. And then you can see they expanded, final expansion. Um, there's some catcher's masks down here. And most of my memories of Tiger Stadium were in these blue seats, or the orange seats, which were in the lower part of the upper deck. But such a great place to see baseball. You're always right on top of the field. So this goes back to the 1935 World Series. And Joe Lewis, whose legacy still lives on in Detroit and the Detroit Lions 1952 championship. This is honoring Willie Horton, who hit a three-run homer in my first ever Tiger game. His number is retired, and there's a statue of him at Comerica Park. And the concession stand even have some has this really cool mural of former Tiger players here. All right, I'm on the field of the old Tiger Stadium right at home plate. So uh, I've got special permission to do uh, go run around the bases. was so cool. Okay, let's check some of the bars and restaurants in the Corktown area to see what they have. Bobcat Bonnie's is a great spot for food and drink. And if you head into the back room of Bobcat Bonnie's, you'll see this great sign. Uh, I think it was in the main entry entryway at Michigan and Trumbull of Tiger Stadium. And then right next to it is a picture of uh, when Tiger Stadium was Navin Field. Both are worth checking out. McShane's Bar is a great spot. And it used to be called the Home Plate when Tiger Stadium was around. It's right across the street from Tiger Stadium and at the corner of Michigan and Trumbull. Inside, there is a great collection of pictures and memorabilia that is worth walking around the restaurant. My favorite are these two Tiger Stadium seats and the Gate 2 sign that sits a little higher up, so you have to look up to find it. Nemo's Bar is a classic that has been in business for well over 50 years. First it was a great Tiger Bar, and now it's a great venue for any event as they will bus you to any of the stadiums for concerts or sports. When you walk into Nemo's Bar, all you see is Detroit headlines, newspapers, some memorabilia. However, on this day, I happened to catch the day of the Babe Ruth birthday party. It's done once a year. I'll include the link so if anyone's interested in attending the next year. But this looked really cool. They totally decked the place out with Babe Ruth memorabilia and some of it relating to Babe Ruth playing in Detroit. As we can see here, from Babe Ruth's Blast out of Navin Field. Another great stop for memorabilia is Shields Pizza in the Maccabees building on Woodward just north of Warren. And this real neat collection of bases from Navin Field through Tiger Stadium. They also have a baseball signed by the 1984 Detroit Tigers. And I like this part, a collection of gloves thrown at umpires in Brig, from Briggs Stadium. Shields is of course known for their Detroit style pizza. Inside Harwell Field on the campus of Wayne State University are some great pictures and a little bit of memorabilia from Ernie Harwell. But the real treat here is outside within the wall is the former Tiger Stadium auxiliary scoreboard. And it is still used today. Our next stop to see some memorabilia 
is the Detroit Historical Museum on Woodward. In the main hall, the iconic Tiger Stadium sign stands above. You can also find jerseys, old stadium seats from Briggs Stadium, some of the old gloves, even an old newspaper article of a Tiger championship. The Historical Museum is a great place to visit. The Hockey Town Cafe sits on Woodward across from Comerica Park and they have a nice little collection of jerseys, trophies, hats, and this one particular one I really like, the John Hiller Fireman of the Year Award from 1973. As you can guess, Comerica Park will be a good place to see some old Tiger Stadium memorabilia. We'll start here on Montcalm Street on the outside of Comerica Park. There is the Ty Cobb plaque. Now this plaque was originally mounted on Tiger Stadium in 1963 and then brought over to Comerica Park to be on display on the outside. Now once inside the ballpark, there's several little indications of Tiger Stadium days, including these decade kiosks that are around the lower level of the ballpark. But what I really want to show isn't easily accessible. It's in the corner tap room, which is on the lower level on the first base side. You don't need any special permission to get into the corner tap room, but once inside, it is a museum of days gone by and Tiger Stadium history. Lots of artifacts from Navin Field, Briggs Stadium, and of course when it was Tiger Stadium. And make sure you peek all the way around the corner so you can see the Tiger Stadium display as well as this great mural of the field. They did a real nice job with this display and I highly recommend checking it out if you haven't been in the corner tap room. It's a great spot. So my last stop is here at Ray's Ice Cream in Royal Oak. It's an iconic franchise that opened in 1958. But what's great about it is you can get your homemade premium ice cream and eat it in a Tiger Stadium seat. So let's head in. And as I mentioned, Ray's opened in 1958 and has, a, has had a loyal following ever since. Here's a picture of the last game at Tiger Stadium in 1999. And as I pan over, you can see the two seats. Let's get some ice cream. So one more thing I wanted to mention as I end this video, if you know of any place that has Tiger Stadium memorabilia, some type of historic reference, I would love to hear about it. I'd love to do another searching for Tiger Stadium. So please let me know in the comments below and uh, we'll check them out. Hey, thanks so much for watching and making it to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.